Okay, so here is uh, the AV-02 Condor. This is the airplane that almost, almost was good enough to, to meet the mission goals. Uh, I know that in the last episode, I was, I was beginning to get a little bit discouraged about it. You just almost hitting it and not, and not getting there. And I was really I was maybe looking forward to designing some faster stuff. But then I went back and took a look at some of the video and saw really how close this airplane was to meeting my goal, staying above 17.5 for at least a minute. Um, I think we just need to do a little bit of redesigning to this. Yeah, this is going to, we're going to make this the AV-02. O2 dash Bravo Condor. Here we go. Save. All right. Okay. Well, actually, one thing I need to do first off is I forgot to save this with the instruments on there. <laughs> it's important. Needs a barometer. Needs a, a thermometer. Okay. Um, so the the first version was actually overpowered. It didn't need all this engine like I thought it might. Let's get rid of that. We are going only going to keep that single engine back on the tail. Uh, another issue that we were running into. So, I mean, overall, if the thing was overpowered, it was too heavy, it actually didn't have enough wing, and this tail, which the the V-tail, which I was kind of excited about because it looks kind of cool, looks kind of bird-like, uh, this was generally a bad idea. We need to go for a more conventional tail design as this. It did not have enough pitch authority. Okay. Let me see. Let's mirror that. So we're going to go for... Here. Let's... Yeah, we'll try and do like a more conventional cruciform tail kind of thing. Oh, except do I do that? I have to figure out what am I going to do about this single engine. Hmm. Um, I suppose I could do like a, like twin rudders out here. That would work. And we're also, I'm going to get rid of those control surfaces as the stock control surfaces just aren't big enough. And I know we've got these extra large or two meter control surface, large, yeah, we've more, con more, con more area to play around with. Okay, yeah, we're kind of spoiling some of the, the airplane's graceful lines that it previously had, but it it is for a good cause, you know. Uh, this we. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of style in order to get some function out of it. Okay, now this vehicle also, it's carrying around too much, is carrying too much weight in that it had more engines than it needs. It also is carrying around too much weight in that it has more fuel than it needs. So, get rid of that, just stash those to the side for a second. Pull that off of there, pull that off of there, and let's go for, yeah, again, we'll stick with the, the same style, but see if we can get a smaller fuel tank in there. Um, this one. So we'll shorten the overall vehicle quite a bit, like this. Good, that'll work. Okay, let's pull those off of there for the time being. Uh, turn on my center of mass indicator. Center of mass is still right in the middle of the fuel, which I like. That makes me happy. Yep, not quite. Hang on. Turn on the lift indicator. Oh, come on. Why can't I get this right? That looks more like it. Uh, except let's scoot the whole wing assembly forward some. About like that. That's good. Okay, uh, so and now I also want to let's as ridiculously extended as these 
these wing assemblies already are, uh, I think maybe they aren't ridiculously extended enough. Let's make them bigger. Stretch them out some more. <laughs> oh yeah, let's just make it look absurd, you know? More, more, well, more absurd than it previously looked like. Yep, that's looking pretty absurd. Okay, so yeah, we've addressed the issues. We have less weight, we have less mass, less fuel, uh, less thrust, more control authority, more wing, more lift. So is, yeah, this is definitely addressing the design flaws previous of the previous iteration. Scoot those mains back some. Yeah, about like that. Yeah, that'll work. And we've got the instruments on there. Save it. Okay, now let's do this whole sweeping the angle of attack thing. Control surfaces. Set up all our control surfaces as that's all changed. Good. Okay, let's save it one more time. Uh, and we see, we also want to kind of scoot the thing forward some in order to prevent that issue that we ran into before with it sink. Uh, we rolled off of the, the launch, the, the runway launch pad thing and, and sank into the runway. So you know, we'll scoot it forward some. Okay, is there anything else I need to do? Nothing coming to mind. Let's see, do we give it a working price? Okay, this thing, we appear to have a working price happening now, so that's good. Uh, let's go with this one. Select that mission. Yeah, I'm, I'm not worrying too hard about our totally bugged out budget since uh, we're going to reset that whenever the, the actual competition space race thing happens. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll, it'll get fixed later. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I believe that's everything I need. Save that. Okay, and then we'll do some of the off-screen magic to make it appear over at the other place. Yep, here we are. Yeah, some of the off-screen magic. Since I'm still using the old version of these so I can uh, load ships in without uh, having to have the resources for them, uh, it means that I had to go and load the, take the, the Condor out of the space plane hangar and load it into the vehicle assembly building. In case anybody's interested. That has to work. Okay, there it is. Extending wingtips, spanning <laughs> past the edges of the runway by quite a bit. Uh, what happened to Bob? I don't know, but here's Mitt Bro. Okay, Mitt Bro. Um, yeah, I haven't... Uh, I think I have to apologize to viewers. I have not yet on this, on this save file gone through and uh, put viewers' custom-named Kerbals in, into all these... Sub, into all the named the Kerbals after him, so this is a genuinely, randomly, randomly generated Kerbal. Don't feel bad about that, Midbro. Uh, he doesn't feel bad. He's he's looking like he's all very pleasant. He's ready to go. Okay, so let me see. I got my rudder. Okay, rudder and aileron and elevator. Um, anything else that I'm th missing? Let's do this, make certain that this is going to work. Uh, crew insurance, 100,000. Some so yeah, this will take 120,000 out of my 133,000 budget whenever I stage. I think part of the issue was I wasn't using the actual space bar to stage. I was using a button on my joystick. Let's try this. If I use if I use the space bar, it works correctly. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Okay, Mitt bro, let's go. Let's do it, dude. Definitely a little bit more sluggish to accelerate using just one engine. I mean, kind of squirrely. Oh, yeah, let's kind of kind of squirrely in the yaw. That was kind of an exciting takeoff, actually. Okay, no reason to go full throttle right here. And yeah, let's. 
Let's do the kind of repeat of the same profile that we had before. Mitbro, uh, Mitbro, as soon as we started flying, he got a little bit more concerned. Yeah, Mitbro liked sitting in in the cockpit, sitting on the end of the runway and looking around. But as soon as he actually took to the sky, he got concerned. So <laughs> maybe he's 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 not he's not a born natural pilot, you know. <laughs> okay. I still do think it's kind of a cool looking airplane. It's not as cool as it looked before. It's absurd. It, it's more absurd than it was before, but just just the sheer scale of those wings is is it's it's pleasantly absurd, you know? And especially since we, now that I, I took those, uh, I removed the engines from underneath, I no longer have a reason for that, for that gold wing shape, because that, that was the reason I had those gold wing, to put the complex polyhedral on there, but uh, it still looks kind of cool. It looks like a seagull, really. <laughs> Somebody pointed out that that looks like the letter K. That honestly had never occurred to me that that was, that... That's what that what the lake is actually shaped like. So, uh, that's that's a good point. It, it made me smile. I was reading some of the comments in previous videos that, uh, even though even though I I deliberately just just being kind of curmudgeonly, I never did uh, mention the U two as 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 being an one of the inspirations for the for this vehicle. It's, I should know viewers they catch it anyway. You you know what you're looking at. I love my viewers. You guys are smart. Just like I should have expected whenever I, I um, you know, it's like just bare minutes after I l uploaded the video and I just revealed to you in Bride Lake. There's uh, just minutes after people caught, somebody's uh, caught the reference and they know what I'm referring to Groom Lake, which is Area 51 in real life. Area 51 and in the in the real world may or may not be where there's any alien technology and alien corpses and autopsies happening. But what definitely does happen there is research and development of of fancy new airplanes like this. So yeah. Bride Lake. To to match Groom Lake. I know I know for a time that they had the uh, the longest runway in the world is there. I'm, I'm not certain if it still holds that record, but I know at one time it did. It may still. Miles long. And it's definitely uh, pitch authority. It's having this airplane's having much nicer manners in, in as far as pitch control as opposed to the previous ones. Yeah, okay, you can already feel. Yeah, I can listen to that engine tone and also look at the things it's doing with airspeed and the climb. Yeah, we're starting to lose some power. Not enough to be concerned about the, yet, though. 14. Yeah, okay. So our airspeed is dropping. Instead, 67. And I know that the previously we ran into problems since we dropped our airspeed down to the 50s range. Which I expect that with the changes we did, that this airplane would actually be able to fly even slower than that. So I think we're still okay with that. Look at that intake air is dropping up 0 0.02. That's kind of worrisome. But it's still making thrust. I just needed to make just a little bit of thrust. Just enough to maintain this climb, you know? Coming up in 15 kilometers. Still climbing, no problems. Okay, well, our, t our climb... Okay, there's the beginning of a problem. Our climb is starting to slow down. Uh, pitch back a little bit more. Okay. Intake air, 0 0.01. Isn't that exciting? But we're still nice and controllable. 16 kilometers. Mitbro, we're gonna do it, dude! It's gonna work, it's gonna happen. 16 and a half kilometers, just one kilometer to go. We can do this. 
Airspeed down to 55. Uh, we're still subsonic, so that's good. And keep a nice gentle climb. We'll pitch back a little bit more. Let's keep that climb going. The engine sounds like it's almost done, you know? Oh, come on. Okay, starting to wobble around. You can tell we're getting closer to a uh, stall. We're not there yet, but definitely not. It, we're losing some stability. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. 17.5. Let's keep this going. Okay, so by the clock over my left, that was at 7.05. Yeah, 7 minutes and 5 seconds after launch. Okay, this works. This works very well. Get up to 18. Let's actually pitch forward just a little bit. Try to, like, maintain altitude. So I'm scared of losing engine power totally. The airspeed is down to 50. Okay, no, don't be dropping too, too fast like that. Now maintain altitude. Oh, I'm pitching all the way back, and we're still dropping. No, no, okay, here we go. Here we go. We'll catch it. We'll catch it. There. Uh, we're technically supersonic again. Kind of yo-yoing around. Okay, catch that climb. Don't be climbing too much again. Just a few seconds by that clock over here. Let's see if I can shuffle over and click on this thing. Boom! Got it! How about that? Okay. Okay. That part is accomplished. Now Mitbro is going to uh, find out just exactly how high this thing can climb. I already know it can do 18 kilometers. It can do like 18 and a half. Here, let's lower the nose, pick up a little more airspeed. Yeah, I know that the previous, Bob, he got his up to like 22, but that was in this wild, uncontrolled ballistic arc, you know? I want to see controllable, sustained, maintaining altitude. Start pitching forward a little bit, just to keep this under control. Not, pit, not so much pitching forward, it's relaxing that back pressure. Yeah, still, okay, we're above 18 and still nicely controllable. Airspeed down to 49.4, still dropping. Okay, 18.5 kilometers, still going. Ooh, we lost that engine, okay. <laughs> yeah, that engine saw 18.5 and just... Engine was not willing to do anymore. Okay, cool. I think 18.5 is respectable enough, Mitt bro. Let's head back to the barn. It's back there somewhere. Wow, we really traveled far. Yeah, let's go back. <laughs> yeah, okay. I have not yet written a next mission, but yeah, the next thing we'll be looking at will definitely be a exploring the supersonic flight, uh, finding out what happens when we fly fast. We know what happens when we fly high. Now we need to find out what happens when we fly fast. And sometime after that, I imagine that we'll uh, get get a, a an agreed upon set of rules and, a, and an agreed upon mission pack for to actually start doing space race stuff. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I think I'm probably gonna uh, you know I'll edit out a whole bunch of this. It looks like it's gonna be take a long time, several minutes of slowly cruising on back. Cruising on back to Bride Lake. Yep, here we are. Very long, uneventful, boring flight back. Just here we are in another kind of a gradual descent. I suppose we could descend a little bit faster. Mitbro, he's, he's not as upset as he was earlier. Still, he's 
I, I think he is not so pleased upon achieving this milestone, upon achieving success in, in the state admission as I would have wanted him to be. If I were in his position, I would be more pleased with accomplishing this task. But, well, I'm not, I'm not mit bro, you know? All right, well, as I'm very gently, very docilely <laughs> descending away, <laughs> this thing flies so slow, brief. Uh, yeah, well, I saw other people making comments about that uh, Star Maid game, which I, I recall that I looked at that game several months ago. It may even have been more than a year ago that I looked at it and I was considering doing a video series, but I think it, at that point I decided that it was too rough. It, it, didn't quite have enough features. Uh, anyway, I saw all your comments. I'm not certain where where all those comments came from all of a sudden, but I, I looked at it. I looked, went and took another look at the game, and yes, yes, I'll go ahead and I'll commit. I'll commit right now that I am going to be doing a a Star Made series. Um, maybe not not the next one. Probably not immediately after Wayfarer. Uh, I believe there's a, another project I want to get in there, but yeah. But yeah, d definitely we're going to do some Star Maid. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do some Star Maid sometime soon. I, I want to do uh, kind of a more uh, conventional flight sim first before getting into doing some more outer space stuff. Because uh, yeah, I want to do bo both the, the airplanes and the outer space, you know? So yeah, so thank you people telling me to look at Star Maid. That was a, that was a good recommendation and I appreciate it. If this game had, if they simulated wind and if, if it simulated thermals and updrafts and downdrafts, I'd like to try this thing out and just see how, how good of a, a glider it would be. <laughs> see how long you could stay aloft by catching some of these updrafts next to these mountains and stuff. There it is. Oh, I... I'm actually higher. Got more altitude even than I thought I did. Okay, okay. Uh, kind of difficult to manage just by how much this thing floats. Using a lot of rudder there. Maybe too much. Add a little bit of power right there, just because I want to get this thing kind of over the runway before we set down. Good. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! What was that again? Did you see this? Add power, add power, add power. What was this weirdness about? Well, here, let's just set it down right here. Why not? Okay, maybe that's why not. Uh, let's just check and find out. Crashed. Runway crashed into Kerbin. Maybe this whole cyst... Oh, oh, oh. Launch clamp, launch clamp, launch clamp. Oh. 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 Bad news. Bad news. Oh, I wish I had an eject system. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. 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 <laughs> weirdest KSP airplane tragedy in the whole history of weird KSP tragedies because oh man I can't even switch can I switch over to my vehicle oh well so I, I wanted to try and recycle some of the parts I guess it doesn't really matter <laughs> and I didn't oh I didn't get to finish the mission <laughs> what the what the, the the runway's teleporting around. What is this weirdness? Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe this whole system that I have here, this runway, maybe that's just not going to work. Maybe I should just get rid of it and I'll just do all my bush planes just landing on the rough terrain like I'm, I'm more accustomed to anyway. Yeah, okay, I'll think about that. <laughs> we'll see how we deal with it. Uh, in any case, it's been fun. Uh, yeah, this should be a fairly... 
very mellow episode for the most part. I uh, will talk to everybody later. Bye.